From the moment Himawari Uzumaki was introduced in the series, one of the things that immediately stood out about it was that back in fall of 2014, when Naruto Chapter 700 came out, we saw that unlike her brother Boruto, who was in the Ninja Academy and clearly on the path to becoming Hokage, Himawari, she didn't appear to be at the Academy at the time. There was a ton of fans who were upset at the fact that only one of Naruto's children was a shinobi and Upon the chapter release, we didn't know the ages officially of Boruto Himawari yet because Naruto the Last, which had been getting heavily promoted for the last six months of the manga run. So think back to the part of the story before Kaguya got revived and Madara was becoming a Tentel Shinchuriki. We were getting trailers for the movies and some of the promotional spoilers. So we knew which characters were alive and the manga wasn't over. However, it wouldn't be until the movie came out and Studio Piro released the character design sheets and we got the Naruto Last Movie data book released in the theaters over in Japan. It wouldn't be until then that we learned that Boruto was five years old during the epilogue scene and Himawari was three years old. So there's a two year age gap, which that information allowed everyone to pinpoint how old Boruto and Himawari were during Naruto Chapter 700, which was set 14 years after the Ninja War. However, However, there were still fans upset because going by the traditional academy system, she should have been at the academy and they felt Hinata's daughter was being wasted. Well, funny how all that stuff gets flipped on his head. With the release of Boruto 2 Blue Vortex Chapter 8, we learn not only that Himawari did indeed become a ninja, but she's also in possession of a confirmed hidden power. And we now know that that hidden power is what Damon sensed. It was Biju Chakra. And Himawari finds herself standing right in front of Jura, where Jura looks like he's ready to start throwing hands at the little sweet 13-year-old Himawari. However, there are some who are a bit upset that Himawari's hidden power is Biju Chalk related, which is why in today's video, I wanted to tackle whether or not this was the best path forward for Himawari's hidden power. Now, this will not be a video explaining how she got said hidden power because I've already done a video giving my thoughts on that. So I'm not gonna regurgitate those points, nor will this be a chapter review, which I recommend watching those videos in case you missed them. I personally don't mind the approach that we're getting here, that Himawari and her hidden power is linked to Biju chakra realistically speaking it was the only thing that made the most sense when it came to himawari getting a power up during this time there weren't that many routes you could go there with himawari that wouldn't feel cheap you could have gone the whole concept of retcon and the tensigon and you can achieve it by twisting the lore around by saying hey both of her parents they have the remnants of chakra from kaguya's sons and Boruto strongly inherited genetics of the Otsutsuki. That Himawari also strongly inherited Otsutsuki genetics. And because the two sons are people that gave the chakra to her parents, maybe you can do some twisting and say there's something Kagi related. Maybe you can say that Himawari has some backdoor Otsutsuki genetics. And so because of this, she could naturally awaken the Tensegan Eye the way that Hamura did towards the end of his life. You could jump through those hoops, but you also would have some of the pushback you had in 2016 when Boruto chapter one dropped and people were running with the whole Boruto's eye is a Tensegan conversation with Himawari currently. If you go the route that this is Biju Chakra, the whole reason why it works is kind of simple. It takes a previously established source of power that's in universe, something everybody is familiar with, and it's using it to build on top of what a character already has. Granted, it requires some suspension of disbelief, but hey, we watched ninjas fight against ninjas and zombie ninjas and ninjas that transform into kaiju monsters, aliens. We've seen a bunch of crazy stuff, so this ain't the craziest thing. Yes, you run into the question of how did she even get this chakra, which again, I've already covered that in another video, but with situations like this, you at least know that they're going to get answered at some some point later on in the story but there's a strong chance it won't be in the next chapter it might not be in the next manga volume itself sometimes the story in particular monthly manga is going to take a little longer to get you to the answer the same way we had to wait several months after the naruto versus delta fight to even find out why car enters were that strong that naruto a guy who wasn't even at full power was bullying fused momoshiki but against delta in taijutsu let me repeat in taijutsu he had to go all out against her again only in taijutsu because when he used the rasengan he held back at first to push her ninja tech to failure so it couldn't absorb any more chakra then he used another giant rasengan with just no chakra to knock her out cold without killing her but that doesn't change the fact that in taijutsu he went full power and was sucking up air the way that Hinata used the 64 vacuum sucks on Naruto during their honeymoon. 
it wouldn't be until almost a year later when one of the physical volumes dropped and we learned that the nanotech that the car enters have that a model pumped into them it uses nanotech and it builds on the bionic ninja tech that konaha used that makes use out of hashirama cell to build a synthetic chakra pathway system hence that massive boost in power that comes from it because the tech puts everything on steroids at some point we'll get an answer either in the physical volume like we did when we learned that himawari chose to train under shikadai in team 10 instead of the hugo clan or there'll be something mentioned later on in the manga like how eventually we learned the true nature of Ada and Damon's powers, but it took us a couple years to get that answer. For what we got right now, and given the many parallels we have between Himawari and Son Gohan from Akira Toriyama's Dragon Ball manga, I think we have enough here that it works because it feels like the narrative is going for that very classic shonen trope. A child is in possession of a monster power that comes out when that soft-spoken child gets highly emotional and said power starts coming out on a sliding scale even when it makes absolutely no sense at all because it's a sliding scale in the power creep for said power it raises up whenever the story needs it to get to a certain point himawari is someone who we've seen she gets monster stat increases when her emotion causes her byakugan to flare up in the day that naruto became hokage the manga one shot included in the theatrical release that Japanese fans who saw Boruto movie got, we saw that she got emotional and awakened her Byakugan and shut down all of Naruto's chakra points in one strike, something that typically requires each chakra point to be struck in a series of attacks and even Kurama was spooked at her. Himawari's grandfather took note of her potential as did Hanabi in the parent and child a novel and in the anime, when we saw Himawari's emotions get the better of her, showed a burst of power and speed that scared the living daylights out of the one tail, someone who had just battled Urashiki not that long ago in the timeline. He wasn't scared of Urashiki, but he was scared of her. Maybe he knew that Urashiki wasn't shit, but more than likely, Himawari showed him something that scared him. She's clearly being positioned for something similar as Son Gohan from Dragon Ball, and it's because of those similarities that I think Himawari's power, while it's not the best writing, I'll definitely admit that, it's not the best writing, it can be something that over time becomes a plot point in of itself. It's what we call a stroke of accidental brilliance. The same way that Toriyama accidentally forgot to color in Goku's hair, so that blonde Super Saiyan hair was supposed to be black, left it white, it's the same thing. Imagine getting into a time machine and going back to 1988, when Dragon Ball Chapter 204 dropped and you had Goku's four-year-old son who hadn't had any real training because Chi-Chi stopped Goku each time he tried to train him. Imagine being back then and seeing said child suddenly possess more power than Goku and Piccolo Jr. who at the time were the two strongest people five years ago in the timeline and they were getting bullied by Raditz but this toddler with one hit does more damage than either one of them did a whole 200 chapters watching Goku scratch and claw his way to becoming recognized as the strongest, yet a child, a four-year-old child, ended up surpassing him. Kind of like how Naruto fans feel watching Naruto struggle and bumble and bustle his way to get his power, and all of a sudden, his children surpass him. Sounds familiar, don't it? Well, here's the thing. Yet, as the years would go by with the Dragon Ball stuff, we would get multiple statements hinting that Gohan possessed monster power, that even though he'd been training, he still hadn't scratched the surface and we'd see him surpass his father at least once in each of the story arcs afterwards. And it would be made the clearest during the cell fight where just as a normal super scene, he was already a lot stronger than his dad. And it would be that hidden power that the story point used to make him go super saiyan too. And then later on, it cheese the mystic Gohan form in the Boo saga. And it wouldn't be until 35 years later after he first showed that monster power that we would finally see him not only in full control of said power, but the explanation for all those surges we saw in the first manga, it explained that it was more than something linked to his emotion and that it was the sole source of the power itself. There's a little bit more to it. And he could full on control everything. Obviously, I'm not saying that, hey, we're gonna wait 35 years in real time. I don't expect Boruto to last another five years, let alone another 35 years. But I am saying there's a possibility of a long game here with Himawari. 
it's going to require more attention span than watching a TikTok or YouTube short. It's going to require more patience than a week where you can binge watch 100, 720 episodes of Naruto franchise and get the whole story and get all the answers right then and there. I'm on record saying I think Boruto has four years at top six more years. So we're gonna get the answer before that. For all we know, this might be an Attack on Titan type of approach where we had to wait several years to learn the identity of the Beast Titan, or it might go the route that Boruto Part 1 did where we had to wait two years to find out how Kawaki would get his coma so back after he lost it. I think the big thing here is we just gotta strap in and enjoy the ride and wait to see what the payoff is. We're likely about to see Naruto's baby girls show out in battle. And it's probably going to be that shonen trope where the last person you expect to be super strong has that monster potential inside their body and nobody saw it coming. And if it is, I say let it play out, see how the story gets us to the answer and judge after we get the full answer, not as the answer is coming out, which is what we typically tend to do. That's one of the downsides to following weekly, monthly, quarterly manga which yes, there are quarterly manga that come out every three to four months. I'm a Black Clover fan. We have not gotten a chapter since December and we get one in April and it's only 40 pages for the two chapters combined. Think about how many months that is. Boruto fans, you don't got it so bad, do you? Sometimes we jump the gun. Now, if we learn that she was born with say these monster chakra levels on her own and that's before you factor in that Biju chakra, but because she didn't have any real training and she wasn't able to tap into said power, it's not the sexiest answer, but it's one that lines up with those classic shonen tropes. And given that the guy is responsible for Boruto's story, Masashi Kishimoto and Mikio Ikimoto, they're huge Dragon Ball fans and part of Boruto's story was heavily inspired by Dragon Ball. I'll just say taking inspiration from an iconic series such as Dragon Ball is never a bad thing to do especially when you're paying homage to it, especially given how much Boruto's pay homage to Jojo. And I'm only in part one and I can see quite a bit of inspiration has been taken there. There's a reason why the Dragon Ball franchise survived 40 years and continues to hold a strong fan base and spans across generational lines, especially south of the border for us Americans, where it's bigger in Mexico and it's bigger in South America than it is in the United States or even in Japan. I honestly don't think this power up is a bad idea, but I do think it comes down to both how it's explained and most importantly, how it's conveyed. I remember all the discourse that was going on when Kawaki lost the coma soon. People are saying this makes no sense. They wrote themselves into a corner. It's not gonna make sense on how he gets the coma back. And lo and behold, two years later, I feel like we got a pretty satisfactory answer for how Kawaki he got the karma seal again again you don't jump the gun when you read a, a monthly manga you wait for it to play out people want answers on powers right then and there and there will be seeds being planted to start setting the foundation to give you answers it gets lost in translation because of all the karma stuff but naruto's kids they all had monster potential even sasuke in the very first arc of the story was telling boruto before he even got a karma seal before we even knew that momoshiki touched boruto that at the rate that boruto's progressing he was going to surpass naruto and naruto was wicked strong at that point and sasuke wasn't the only one saying that does himawari become someone of that vein where she shows the potential to that level I don't think we can rule it out. And I also don't think that we can rule out her getting upscaled in power the way that Jujutsu Kaisen's newest chapter upscaled a certain character introduced several years ago, which you can see who I mean by clicking this link on the screen.